Hello, welcome back to Talon 101. This time, we're gonna cover back turn. That's right, Quarang's got two back turn stances. He's got back turn in right foot forward and back turn in left foot forward. And these moves used to be different back in Tekken 7, wherein you had specific moves from left foot forward and specific moves in right foot forward. But in Tekken 8, they've kind of, you know, normalized it, changed it, right? So anytime you go into back turn, both moves are the same. Regardless of which back turn stance you're in, whether that be back turn right foot forward or back turn left foot forward. You're like, you'll always get the same button regardless of like the stance you're in. And that's fine. But uh, we do lose one option, which was back turn RFF 3-4. So not minding the loss of back turn uh, RFF 3-4, which was this move, which is while standing 3 plus 4, 3. We have more or less the same options from before, so... We're gonna go over them one by one. And so back turn one, this is your I-8 high. So anytime you find yourself in back turn and you're panicking, you should press the one or the two. And yes, the tracking on these moves will differ depending on the situation. So let's bring up an example here. So we're gonna tell the opponent to sidestep towards the left. And we're gonna do a running four. And we mash one, they can't step there. And we mash two, they also can't step there. So let's pick a different situation that puts you in back turn. Let's pick a different scenario like RFF down three, which is zero. And if they try to sidestep towards the left, back turn two will have you covered. And I guess back turn one as well, which is the same thing with the back turn plasma blades, which are both negative 13. So if you press three, you're going to end up back in left foot forward. And if you press four, you're gonna end in right foot forward. Of course, this will affect the combos you get. You're in back turn, you press three. You can get the the usual combo that you do in left foot forward off DF2 or back three. And then if you get it off right plasma blade, this is when you start to consider doing backlash right after your combo to get extra damage. But yeah, you just or you can do the same route. Just in a different way. Now the other thing you can do in back turn are throws. So if you press 1 plus 3, you'll get the generic 1 plus 3. And if you press 2 plus 4, you'll also get the generic 2 plus 4. But you can do command throws from here. So if you press 1 plus 3 forward, you will get jackknife. Which is great. And you can mix that up with 2 plus 4 back for roll and choke. So now you have a 1 plus 2, a 2, and generic throws to mix up your opponent. So if you do get them with, let's say, a running four, well, they really have to guess for the most part because these throws still come out at 12 frames. And if you are in a situation where you're plus five, pretty fast. The next thing you can do to make your opponent guess, right? Because you, you know, you still have your highs, you have your launchers and your throws. While that may be enough to keep your opponent in check, Huang has additional options. One of them being back turn down three. This is your low counter hit launcher that is negative 8 on hit. And if it does connect, does recover in crouching. So you'll have your 13 frame while standing 4-4. Four, four, 14 frame while standing 4-4. Four, four, or your 13 frame down jabs. Or down jab. Because the other down jab would also come out at 14 frames. If you want to continue stealing your turn. Now of course, if it does launch on counter hit, you crouch cancel into down back 4. Select whatever combo you'd like to do. Or the combo that you were doing off sidestep 4, I guess minus the RFF part because this move does not put Porang in right flamingo. And you'll be pretty much on your way. Now the last low that you're allowed to do here is back turn down back 4 or back turn DF4. And you'll get the, the generic FC4 for the most part where you go negative 4. And if the opponent again does block this, where well you go negative 15. Which is, uh, if your opponent is awake, they will launch punish this. But for the most part, most people will be punishing this with their generic or their fastest wall standing move. It is only on back turn 3 where if the opponent does know or they have a strong 13 frame wall standing launcher or punisher, then yeah, it's going to hurt. Like Kazuya where he gets twin pistons while standing 1-2. So most of these moves are again used in conjun conjunction with moves that put Horang in back turn so mainly that'd be like running four the 10 hit which is lfs 223 
or RFS 1, 2, 3. RFF down 3 on hit. RFF forward 3. And then you hold back to go to back turn. While standing 3 plus 4. As that move puts you in back turn. And then you can also do it in... Combos. Wherein you jump over the opponent and then you get access to all your back turn options. Which makes it a really strong 50-50 guess. Or you can also do it at the wall. Where your opponent would have to guess which option you want to do. Like so. So you end it on LFS3, F4, back turn. And then now you can get a grab, realign, do a plasma blade, etc. So typically, these, these mix-ups start off with the grab. The grab is usually your go-to. And if not the grab, you're trying to get plasma blades. However, if your opponent is pressing button very quickly, so here we have a jab recorded and you try to throw a plasma blade. Of course, off running four, you will win, but you will not win off uh, RFF down three as you're only zero on hit. So how would you have to beat this option in situations like that? That's when your I-8 high comes into play. That way they cannot challenge you uh, with a standing jab. But then it's just like that's not their only end frame move, right? Yes, they can do a down jab right afterwards. So boom, and you go for your I-8 high. That's when you lose. Even if you do your 12 frame low from back turn, you will also lose. Your plasma blades will also, well, unfortunately, get denied. So at that point, if you do want to beat a down jab retaliation, you're going to have to hold back right after back turn and try to punish this move correctly as as you go out from back turn, if you mash back three, well, sometimes you're going to get standing three. So stick with like an up forward input or a down forward input so that you can get a punish. And I was mashing down three plus four there and I still ended up with down three, four, which is fine for, for again, for as long as you get the punish. But if you're... This is better. Up forward, deep is four. Because the way it would work on other situations like RFF forward three is because they're thinking about the fact that this is basically super plus for Horang, whether that be on hit or on block. And they can't, well, they can't challenge for the most part. Like, it's a bad idea for them to challenge. So you can add that to the mental stack. This becomes then your like fourth or fifth option in the mix up when you hit them with back turn. And then now suddenly they're like, oh, wait. Now you're now my opponent's in back turn and then the frames will reset. You're not gonna be negative eleven anymore and you can get a plasma blade. It's the same thing with while standing three plus four three. Wherein this is the full string. And if the opponent does not power crush in between, because that's the only way to beat this for the most part. Like so. Then yeah. At least you know Horang remains safe. But if they have a parry, like if you're playing against Jin, Law, Xiaoyu. Then, if they are parrying multiple times, then that allows you, the Horang player, to hit them with back turn mix ups if they're parrying in this situation. Because it could look something like this where you, they parry, so they parry right over here, and then you get the plasma blade punish. Or they parry, and then you use a fox step to stay closer to them right afterwards, or you just hit them with the low. I mean, take your pick. And then for jump overs, on combos, this is really legit. So whether that be a jump over after a regular tornado, you'd have to hold down back first. So again, hold down back uh, after the tornado so that you can time your jump over, like hit them with these options. And that's, that's a really good situation because you know the opponent's gonna have a hard time reacting to that. And at the wall, well, it's pretty straightforward. The the wall Oki or ending on LFS 3-4 will give you enough time to do any back turn mix-ups for the most part. Yeah. I don't think that was the best explanation for Horang's back turn moves, but hopefully it did shed a light on like the usage on these moves and when to use them and learning what each of these back turn moves do for Horang. Again, I've been Frontier. And thank you for watching.